Hi everyone, this is Daria Piano. Welcome back to my channel. Today will be about chords. I'll try to do as little cuts as I can because I don't like editing so much, it takes too much time. Simple thing that might seem simple for us who are experienced players, but not so easy for beginners or some people who play a different instrument is actually striking three or more notes at the same time. That requires independence of fingers, that requires strength from your hand, a good dome. I will talk about each of these challenges a little bit more in depth in a minute, but first I'm just going to quickly mention these. And what is a chord? It's important to understand what a chord means. For the purposes of this video, we'll say it's three or four or more notes that are played at the same time simultaneously, but something that has a structure that more or less resembles a triadic structure or a seventh chord structure. So something that I do not consider a chord is something like this. This is a cluster. Yes, it's three or more notes at the same time, but they are too close together. They're right next to each other. So this type of thing is not a chord. For me, it's a cluster. Although it's commonly used in contemporary music or jazz music, and it's a great thing. And some of the things that I'm going to mention about chords can actually be applied to playing clusters as well. Absolutely, but I will not focus on them, only on chords. First. Simultaneously striking three or more notes, so they don't sound like this. So they sound at the same time. You need to first ensure that hand's strength remains unwavering. You need to make sure that you're holding the dome as much as you can. Even when you need to make your hand much flatter for playing chords, yes, of course, something like this, a three note chord, much easier because you can still remain having the dome up. With the bigger chord, you have to go flatter to make sure you can stretch enough, but you still do as much as you can. You're gonna see this white a little bit here because I'm stretching, but I can't do this. As soon as you're gonna do this, you don't have any strength, any power, any control. You're giving this weight down here and your fingers are barely hanging on to it. So don't do this. Second most important thing is to make sure that your fingers are strong individually, that no finger is left behind where they can't function on their own. And of course, especially targeting the forefinger, which is very weak. So individually targeting fingers in the chord where you can simply practice something like this, where you have four note chord. I'm just going to go with a simple C major each finger individually, while the others are holding. Same with a two, three, five. If you had a four, two, let's say four, two. yeah, it's harder for, for the four, I know, but you still have to kind of do that. And you can do it staccato even easier, better, not easier, it's actually harder, but better, because you can ensure the fingertip is engaged. So you can also do combinations of two fingers or three fingers, something like this. And different kind of combinations. So that goes to the second type of practice. Second type of practice is to ensure the simultaneous attack for four notes or five notes. You make sure that at least two of any combinations are happening at the same time. So basically you start starting with the outer ones first is the easiest, most secure. So if this chord spans an octave, then practice the octave first, make sure it's at the same time, then practice maybe these two middle ones at the same time, these two at the same time. So all combinations, make sure they are all at the same time. That's level one. Level two, you increase difficulty by others who are not striking are holding. So for example, you are holding these and striking with these at the same time. And staccato is better, more sharp, sharper attack is better. Activate your finger, like I said. So same, different combinations. This combination will be the weakest of these four because see how uneven that for your hand, this is much closer to the ground, this is higher. So striking them at the same time is gonna be more difficult than for example these two or these two at the same time. So make sure that each of the combinations works well for you. The third way to do it, practice for simultaneous attack and independence of the finger is hold, for example, two of these, and then these do uh, like this, for example. 
You can improvise as many variants as you want. They all serve the same purpose, activating independence of fingers and make sure they can strike at the same time in any combination of the four of these or five, however many, what kind of chord you have. And that being said, you already have chosen in this, at this point, you've already chosen the best fingering that is more comfortable for you. So you don't have to worry about that. And of course, playing them staccato also helps just um, in any combination, just like this. Make sure you're activating them. In this piano method book, there are also some nice exercises towards the end. For example, this one involves a seventh chord where you hold one note and you strike all four notes of the others at the same time and in different combinations. Now you hold this and strike these four. Oh, sorry. I slipped. And this. And so I'm doing a staccato, you don't have to. So this is a whole page on that. There is another one where you alternate between these two and these, for example, three. It says wrist, stay relaxed. Yeah, for any kind of chord playing, especially when you're stretching, make sure when you, when you don't need to stretch, you don't continue stretching. For example, here, make sure you are going into the close position. Open, close, right? So this has enough for you to work with for simultaneous strokes. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.